Did you do the thing? Okay, yeah, he's gang, but you you gotta stop talking like that. This can't be good for your throat. Bro, 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 bro. Call it arson. Hi, 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 everyone. Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review. Bobby Womack, the bravest man in the universe. This is the latest full-length album from Ohio singer and songwriter Bobby Womack, whose career spans both many years and many genres. Gospel, funk, doo-wop, R&B, and many more. But he's best known as a soul singer. Despite a lot of talent, a very strong voice with a very distinct personality, and having written a nice handful of chart-topping singles in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, Bobby's career has kind of been dwindling, as well as his health, unfortunately. But some recent projects he's been involved in, like singing the lead single off the last Gorillaz album, performing with them live, as well as being on their The Fall album as well, it's kind of revitalized his career and his passion as well. All of the new attention on this man's voice and just his abilities has kind of snowballed into this new Damon Albarn produced studio LP. And it's a collection of, of kind of progressive, spacey, colorfully produced soul songs that remind me of a few things. For one, the more cleanly produced tracks that Bobby was putting out in the 80s, as well as that strong gorillas style beat production. And there's actually quite a bit of moments on this that remind me in a positive way, in a positive way, of, of Lana Del Rey's Born to Die. Now the songs on this LP kind of have a myriad of different topics and moods, but I think this whole LP kind of boils down to a vocal sample on the fourth track of this thing where you hear someone talking about a singer when they get up in age. They have lived life a little bit more and because of that better understand the stories and the emotions that they're trying to convey in their songs. And that is clearly the strength of Bobby on this record. Age has had its pros and cons on his voice and any limitations he is suffering from on this LP are just easily made up for by how well-traveled and, and emotional he sounds singing on these tracks. Right from the intro track, Bobby is singing against just this weeping cello about the bravest man in the universe being the one who can forgive first. But eventually these echoing pianos start rolling in really delicately. And there's just this over-the-top kind of theatrical energy to it that almost reaches a David Bowie kind of level. Please Forgive My Heart is the next track on this album, the first single from this LP, actually, and it is just a really nice, crisp, modern beat with Bobby's fantastic vocals over it. It feels like being gently spun on a merry-go-round underneath a starry sky. The next track on here, Deep River, Bobby is pretty much doing a solo acoustic guitar kind of thing. Really chills the album out pretty quickly into the track listing, I thought. Daglo Reflection is actually the song on here that features Lana Del Rey on vocals. And it's actually not that bad. You know, I don't really care for her voice all that much, but the, the piano chords are really sultry. I wish the beat changed things up a little bit more. Hmm. The track Stupid is, is about religious greed and has a very punchy beat, nice bright piano chords. It's a catchy song with a potent message. And the song If There Wasn't Something There is just heart-wrenching. However, I don't think this album ends all that strongly, though. The song Love Is Gonna Lift You Up, which to me kind of feels like Bobby's story with this album, that if you're still alive, if there's love there, there's a chance for a new beginning, there's a chance for a new day, there's a chance for the, the sun to shine again. The lyrics feel kind of corny, to be completely honest, but they're sincere. 
And I feel like with the right production, they could really kind of hit home and, and people could really understand and, and get into the message of the song. But for some reason, the song is just slathered in these really fake synthetic synths and it just sounds so... It's like they were conscious of how corny the lyrics out of context with this song would sound, so they just decided to purposely surround it with corny production to, I don't know, bring the corniness out? And the song Nothing Can Save You is another vocal feature on here, but it doesn't really add anything to this album that the the Lana Del Rey track didn't already add. And the thing is, that track didn't even really add that much. I feel like neither of the vocal collaborations on this album feel all that collaborative. There's not all that much chemistry between Bobby and whoever is a guest on the track. They're just kind of trading spaces in the verses and not really doing much else. The last song on here, Let's Loose, it's an interesting track. It's kind of like a stop and clap blues screamer, but of course is backed up with sequence drums and synthesizer. It's got a cool message about not letting other people get in your way of, of your passions, your goals, whatnot, but it's not really much of an ending to me. Kind of an anticlimactic ending, I guess. You know, I'm just kind of torn on this thing. The special moments on this album are really special, are just stellar. But the so-so tracks just kind of hold things back. A lot of underwhelming moments on this album. And not because these guys wanted to really get this album done fast and just throw it in the can. It seems like they were more eager to kind of jump onto the next idea, the next kind of experimentation, the next adventure, as opposed to finishing this one thing and really fleshing it out and making it something great. So while I do like this album, and maybe not even a ton, I do think there is something special about the aesthetic of this LP, there's something special about Bobby's voice, his personality, and the personality of the best songs on this album. I would love to see Bobby put out another album next year or the year after. I hope this is not just a, a one-shot thing. I know this record has not been one of the hottest to come out this year, so I hope that doesn't prevent him from releasing new material in the near future, but we're gonna see. I'm feeling a strong six on this LP. What did you guys think of it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? And what should I review next? Anthony Fantano, Bobby Womack, forever.